Hi, welcome to this, the fourth of our series of uh, short webinars on uh, incapability uh, dismissals. My name is Gary Smith. I'm a partner in the employment team at Knockhold Solicitors. And in this session, we're going to move on to uh, poor performance dismissals. And in this uh, webinar, we will look at the concepts around setting standards and identifying poor performance before then in the final session we'll move on to look at uh, the performance management plan itself and how you manage that plan through to either improvement in performance or unfortunately in some instances ultimately dismissal. So the key test in looking at a poor performance in capability dismissal is does the employer genuinely and honestly believe that the employee is incompetent or unsuitable for the job and are the grounds for that belief uh, reasonable and that is the overarching test that will cover uh, all of the elements we're going to cover in the next uh, couple of sessions. Um, importantly, when it comes to setting standards, it is for the employer to set the standards asked of employees. Now, you have to act fairly as between your respective employees, but standards are rarely static and it is open to you as the employer to push standards as high as you like. If you have unreasonably high standards, you will simply end up with a very high turnover of staff. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't set those standards at that very, very highest of uh, levels. As I say, it, th those standards should be fair in, in respect of your, your own individual employees, but what happens out for your competitors or in other businesses is no concern. Um, the standards should be notified to the employee. They should know what is expected of them, but that's standard practice in any event. Otherwise, they don't know what they've got to uh, do. Now, when you're identifying poor performance, um, that can break down into two key components. There are the one-off extremely serious acts of negligence or incompetence. An example there, a pilot uh, endangering passengers when he landed the aircraft negligently. Um, those sorts of scenarios often cross over with gross misconduct uh, type dismissals and uh, can result in dismissal in the first instance straight away. But they are rare that you get something of that sort of magnitude. Um, more often, it is smaller, persistent errors, failing to hit sales targets, making mistakes in work, typographical errors, those sorts of things that crop up that can't be said to be of uh, uh, an order to, of magnitude to justify dismissal, but they are annoying, they sap energy, they drain the quality out of the business, and they need to be addressed. When you are starting on the road towards a performance improvement plan, the onus is on the employer to show the employee is not hitting their standards. So the key thing is evidence, emails, documents, complaints, reports from colleagues or third parties. If it is things like correcting poor standard of work, do you have both a copy of the original document or thing they did and your corrected version to show the the extreme difference. Um, so you bring all of that evidence together before you sit down with the employee to take that next step and look to start the performance improvement plan. And that is the topic that we will cover in our next and final session on incapability. And I hope you will join us for that. Thank you.